Hey guys, so in this video we're going to see a solution to the previous video's problem. So in the previous video we went through the problems where we have skewed, fat, skewed flat results as well as uh, to avoid that uh, we get another problem in which uh, even if the flat results are correct the edges create a problem for us. Uh, so here's one of the solutions which I have is that uh, so let's let's recap. So this is a high resolution mesh, and currently we are focusing on the last two methods. Uh, we are currently split our UVs because we don't have any sort of UV bleedings in between uh, where, where the edges are uh, sewed together. And in our Baker settings, we change the uh, average normal option. In this case, the average normal is on and the average normal is off. Uh, I explain. A bit more detail in the previous video so if you guys want to understand that you can just uh, go to a previous video that I've made um, so here we see the big results and it, when the average normals are on with the split UVs uh, and our geometry normals are of course they're both using uh, non-average normals um, these create some nice edges when we turn on average normals so that substance painter reads the edges nicely on the right hand side, the average normals are off. The edges uh, are sort of missed out in the big, hence we see that weird bumpy line. Uh, now the good bad, the good of both is that one has good edges and one has good flat results. And the problem of both is uh, it creates basically the opposite problem, which is bad flats or skewed flat results. Of in this case, you would see these bumpy lines, which is basically essentially uh, missing out on a big because of how the big results are. Um, so here's uh, one of the solution that is very common in the industry, which is baking it twice. Uh, there are many people who paint out normal maps. I mean, that's not wrong, but it's better if you guys understand uh, how normal maps, normal maps actually are baked. Um, so here's one of the solution is that whenever you guys uh, start things out, or at least uh, before you UV an object, try to understand the smoothing groups of it. So for example, in this case, uh, if there's a 90 degree, we ideally want to keep it a non-average uh, mesh. Uh, of course, these are very ideal circumstances, which may not work all the time, but in most cases, it will work. And for average normals, we see uh, we can average out uh, the geometry if it's roughly 45 degrees or so. For example, if you have bevels in our low-res mesh, you know, we are free to you know, bevel, uh, soften edge or average them out. Uh, once we are done with the normals, only then, preferably, uh, should you uh, you should move on to UVs. Uh, or you can do both simultaneously if you uh, have some experience in uh, baking normal maps. Um, so yeah, I just mentioned about uh, because the UV edge is too close to each other, uh, the baker may cause some problems uh, in some parts of the geometry. So here we see both the problems on the right hand side. So one is uh, average normal is turned on, uh, the baker results in skewed flat results. On the right hand side, we end up with bad edges. So what you're going to do is you're going to sort of combine both these bakes, and the combination method uh, ideally works with a mask. You can think about it like that. So the black color represents the one where average normals are turned on, and we replace the normal map within this black color. And on the right hand side, we see uh, where the uh, where we have good flat results. That's where we want the white mask to appear. And here we see the result of the bake is quite clean, where we get some nice edges and we get some uh, good flat results. So we're going to go through how we actually use this solution in our workflow. Uh, so I'm going to start from scratch, uh, just to recap a bit. So I'm just going to quickly come to my normal map, add this on a 1K map. And I'll say, uh, this is my crazy high-res mesh. And let's just increase some frontal distance because I know that it creates a problem for us. And let's bake this out. So here we see that uh, these are skewed. So that's that's a good thing. Uh, here we see our frontal distance is not, not high enough. So let's change that out. So to frontal distance, roughly 0.19. There you go. So that should be fine. Um, 
yeah, and here we see this error that we see at the flat cylinders. Anyway, so I already went through this in a previous video. So we have good edges around here. We come to our substance painter and we say, all right, you know, um, let's switch off average normals. So the substance painter does not interpolate it wrongly. And hence, when we do that, we get this weird bumpy error. And that's because uh, there's a lack of uh, the, the the bake result around here. Hence, we see that result. Um, so let's, let's do this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flat result normal map and I'm going to export this out. So file export texture. I'm going to use the default channels. Uh, here we can see that this is a 1K map. Um, these are the default channels that are going to come with it. And this is the current uh, place that we're going to save it to. So select this folder. You're going to get base color metallic roughness, normal height, normal open GL, and mix AO. I just want the normal open GL in this case. So I'm just going to click OK. I'm going to open up the folder. You can open up this folder for me, and I'm going to delete these normal maps. I'm going to rename these normal maps as flats or good flats. All right. So let's get some good edges now. So average out. We get some nice edges. Let's export this out. We export the same option. Export. Open folder. And let's delete these guys. So this one will be good edges right so ideally what we're going to do is depending on circumstances ideally it's easier to replace the flats but uh, nevertheless you know uh, in some cases it may be the other way around so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get the edges in so these are the ones that uh, the normals are, are skewed uh, on the flat surfaces and i want to get my uh, good flat surface uh, normal map around here now, if it doesn't come exactly in the center, just zoom out in Photoshop, then you drag it in. Uh, inside of Photoshop, I'll create this mask. So what I'll do is I'm just going to mask out the region. I want this normal map to work. So then, let's say in this case, this one plus around this area, this one, around this area. So I'm using the marquee tool to mask out the region of my big result. And I'm just going to click on this create new mask from selection. That's it's going to do is that's going to use the previous meshes edges, which are nice. And it's going to show me uh, these, uh, these flat surfaces, these flats. So we see if we disable this, it's our previous normals and our current normals. So we enable this mask, we see that it's only replacing the flat. And this is one thing that you cannot do with uh, just purely softening edge everything. Uh, ideally, it's, it's not, not really a good idea. And because there's a mistake, uh, I didn't want this mistake, so I'm just going to erase this guy out. Uh, so you can see it's very easy for us to replace uh, this color with non-average normals. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this as. Uh, I'm going to save this in the same place. I'm going to save it as a JPEG file. I'm going to call it CMB or combined normal map 01. Uh, I can do the same thing for any other map in this case, but uh, right now I'm just going to go to uh, uh, but I'm only going to do to do this inside for the normal map. Uh, so I'm going to take this combined normal map, drag this inside the shelf, uh, add it as a texture, add it in my project file, import it in, and drag and drop this inside my baked mesh maps. Well, see now the result will be perfect. And what I can do from this point onwards is I can count my baked mesh maps and click on none or all in this case except the normal map and what that's going to do is uh, of course uh, except id in this case is all these guys uh, except i'm in inclusion uh, will be baked from uh, a normal map or sometimes even thickness you can see these three cubes uh, referring to the 3d mesh and uh, for the amino occlusion we can just bake this out with um, I don't think we can average because it's going to end up in skewed results. So I'm just going to unselect that and I'm just going to bake. So that should give me that should give me some good results. So if I see my I'm in occlusion, it has these flat normal maps, which look pretty okay. And if I see my curvature, my curvature is reading from my, uh, or at least it should be reading from my normal map, and. I see the thickness. Thickness should be reading from the 3D mesh. Yeah, this is okay, right? 
So here we can see this big result is pretty okay. And now we can just come in and start texturing uh, with any sort of uh, smart material that you may have or smart mask you may have. And we will see that it will work perfectly fine. All right. So this is one way how you guys can uh, work with um, uh, normal maps, or at least baking them twice, and sort of using the solution that is quite common. OK, so that should cover the basics of solving this uh, using this method where we combine. Now, I just illustrated this with a mask. Uh, ideally, this mask can be done inside Photoshop. This mask can be done inside Substance Painter. Uh, I feel inside of Substance Painter, it sometimes gets too complicated. Uh, and maybe I'll go through another video I bake inside Marmoset to see some, uh, to see, uh, to see the difference between Substance and Marmoset. Um, yeah, so this is how we sort of solve this using Photoshop. All right, so see you around. Bye bye.